Hello, hello, hello. Hey, this is Warren Redlick. Hello, hello, hello. I wanted to do an update on Aptera for 2024. There's been some things that have happened with Aptera recently, and uh, am I late? I don't think I'm late. I think I'm right on time. Um, so Aptera has been you know, going along for years trying to, to get this vehicle to into production or if you're cynical, they've been trying to get investors to give them money to make some kind of progress in getting this vehicle in the production. I am pretty much going to take the latter perspective here. But I want to go through, we have a, a very recent update. There's an update to the offering circular. And we also have an annual report that was published not that long ago or filed with the SEC not that long ago. So I want to go through those, those key details. So let's start with, this is the update. So I'm going to make this larger so I can read it and so you guys can read it. Um, this is an update to the offering, right? So if you are thinking about investing in Aptera, this is some additional perks you might get. They're offering perks at no additional cost to investors based on the amount invested. This is, this is new. This is like April 19th. This was filed with the SEC. So this is like the really big, uh, interesting news I'm going to cover some other details that I think are important to understand, but just for starters, investors who invest at least $1,000 will receive a $100 coupon toward the purchase price of a vehicle. <clears throat> can be used for the pre-order registration fee. Investors who invest at least, least $2,000 will receive a $1,000 coupon. <clears throat> and I think you're maxed out at $1,100, and I'm not sure how you get that. If you invest at least $10,000, you receive a 5% discount on a future vehicle. If you invest $25,000, you get a tour of Aptera headquarters in Carlsbad, California, and a test ride in one of our development vehicles. That seems like a lot of money to pay for a test ride. And this I thought was interesting. If you invest $27,000, you get the opportunity to purchase the first Aptera units that the company delivers to the United Arab Emirates with unique vehicle identifiers for the region. So this is something I hadn't seen before. Maybe there's some kind of deal in the works that I haven't seen any news stories about this that they've got some kind of deal with uh, the United Arab Emirates. It's a, it's a country in the Persian Gulf. Um, that's where Dubai is or something like that. Um, to where you, you, uh, you know, as we understand it, they're planning on shipping the first vehicles to people who've already placed orders, but are the United Arab Emirates orders gonna come before the existing orders? That's not clear. It's not really clear who goes first. American customers, United Arab Emirates customers. And then investors invest $100,000. We'll have lunch with our founders, Chris Anthony and Steve Fambro. How many people are paying $100,000 to get lunch with these guys? The maximum investor can use in coupons on a single vehicle is $1,100. The coupons for the first two levels. So in other words, if you, if you invest $10,000 or $12,000, I guess, I don't know if it's $2,000 or $12,000, then you get $1,100. Um, off your car. The coupon can be used with the 5% discount. So basically they're offering sort of like, hey, if we actually ever sell these things, you'll get a little bit of a discount on buying it. Okay. Coupon is limited to one coupon per investor, not one per investment. And the vehicle is not yet in production, has created a priority delivery wait list of the first 53 vehicles will be delivered to the United Arab Emirates for investors invest at least $27,000 in the company. Placement on the waitlist is determined based on investment amount limited to 53 participants. Separate perk from the prior deli priority delivery waitlist for the first 2000 launch edition vehicles will be delivered in California, which the waitlist is now full. Specifically intended for investors that will take delivery of their vehicle in the United Arab Emirates. Okay, but this still doesn't say who comes first. Um, so, okay, so that's that's the that's the the newest information. Is they're just offering some little tweaks. To what you get as an investor if you invest in Aptera. And you know, I should be clear right off the bat, I'm not an investor in Aptera. I am a skeptic of Aptera. I'm not here to offer financial advice. It's just my opinion that this is probably not a good investment, my opinion. Um, and I'll I'm gonna go into why during the course of this video, but there's some other key details. When do they deliver? They so they said that they don't expect to go into manufacturing until 2025. That's part of the um, that if you go on their, their website, there's, um, SEC filings, and I think it's in the annual report. I don't think I clipped the, that part of the annual report for this presentation, 
but I believe they said they don't expect to go into production until, until 2025. And they were cautious and used cautious language suggesting that, um, you know, maybe it won't be 2025. You know, may, maybe they'll get pushed back. So uh, we covered that. Now, I wanted to cover a key, some key details, some new information that I think might surprise people. One of the things that Aptera has been pushing is that they're going to have a 0 0.13 coefficient of drag, that this is like a super efficient, you know, vehicle and you're going to have, you know, extra range and you're going to have low energy usage. And one of the stories behind it was that they've got a 0 0.13 coefficient of drag. Now, a YouTuber named Kim Java did a video with Chris Fambro, one of the founders of the company, one of the, I guess he's one of the co-CEOs. And the 0.13 apparently isn't 0.13, and let me show you that. Last summer, Aptera achieved the lowest coefficient drag of any vehicle ever tested at 0.15. Make 0.15? Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. So Kim Java says 0.15 coefficient of drag. And this is this is a recent video. This just came out. This is a video she did. Chris Van in it. I have a couple other clips from the video that you're going to see. And all of a sudden she says 0.15 coefficient of drag when Aptera for a very long time has been claiming a 0.13 coefficient of drag. This is a significant difference. And you're going to see this play out in another aspect of the company right here. Let me see. Um, we've got specs, you've got 400 miles of range, you've got your 0.13 coefficient of drag. I'm not sure where I have it, but Aptera has been claiming, you're going to see it later in the video, Aptera has been claiming, maybe it's right here, Let's, let me play this and we'll see if it's here. 700 watt the power for a vehicle only uses 100 watt hours per mile is pretty significant. Matt's launch edition Aptera will house a 45 kilowatt hour battery pack good enough. What she said was, 45 kilowatt hour battery pack, 400 miles of range. What he said was 10, 100 watt hours per, per, uh, per, per mile, which is 10 miles a kilowatt hour. If it was 10 miles a kilowatt hour, it'd be a 40 kilowatt hour pack for a 400 mile range. Can you guys hear me now? <laughs> Sorry about that. If it was a if if it was a hundred if it was 10 miles a kilowatt hour, it'd be 40 hundred miles of range for a 40 kilowatt hour pack or 450 miles of range for a 45 kilowatt hour pack. So those are two big differences. It's It was 0.13 coefficient of drag is now 0.15 coefficient of drag. And 10 miles per kilowatt hour is now nine miles a kilowatt hour. And what's gonna happen as you continue going along, you continue engineering the vehicle, all these things happen, what's gonna continue happening? You know, they're not even close to manufacturing. We, we don't know what other challenges they're gonna face. There's a lot of problems they're gonna face. and and I. I, I, maybe I was on, I was muted before I, when I said this. There was a document I saw that indicated that the weight of the vehicle was up about 200 pounds, 200, 300 pounds, something like that. That's increase in weight in the vehicle. I can't find that, so I'm you know that's my recollection and it's possible I'm wrong. But a bunch of things have changed in the vehicle, and they have not changed in the disclosure that they're pushing to investors. They have not changed it on the website. So they haven't said, hey, listen, we've you know done some more work on the vehicle and it turns out we're not going to achieve the numbers we said here's the new numbers we think we're going to achieve so they're not being straight to me they're not being straight with investors that's an important detail I think people should understand now there's the launch addiction vehicle specifications that are shown on the website and you can see here that the document was created January of 2023 so it's more than a year old and those specs are still up on the website they haven't updated the specs and you know this is part of the specs here. You've got 400 miles of range. You got a drag coefficient of 0.13. So that's what was claimed in January of 2023. In March or so, or April of 2024, Kim Java says 0.15 coefficient of drag, and 400 miles of range on a 45 kilowatt hour pack. So something has changed. But Aptera is not. This is this is you know one of my criticisms of Aptera is you need to disclose to investors. Because the people who are making reservations, the people who are investing are doing it because they're getting a reservation, right? That's your that's the pump you're selling them is you're going to get this coupon. You should probably tell them all the details about the vehicle. And if something's changed that's material, like it's no longer 10 miles per kilowatt hour, you should probably stop saying it in an interview 
when you've got a 45 kilowatt hour pack for a 400 mile range. So, and yeah, crash testing is a whole nother thing. So, and here's some more, some more from the specs. This is another important detail that I feel they're not being straight about. And there's, there's video where they dive into this a little bit more, but the onboard charger is, charges 40 to 60 kilowatts. Now you've got a 40 kilowatt hour, a 45 kilowatt hour pack. So if you're charging at 40 kilowatts, which what my recollection is not Fambro, but the other guy, I think it's Chris and Steve. Steve was talking and he said, at first they're doing 40 kilowatts and they're testing to see if they can get up to 60 kilowatts. If you're only charging at 40 kilowatts and you have a 45 kilowatt hour pack, the best you're going to do is more than an hour. And what we've seen, if you follow Tesla as closely as I do, I'm wearing the Tesla Nair t-shirt, I'm a Tesla nerd. You know that typically you have a charging curve where you start at your highest charging output and then at a certain point, the charging, let me close this. You start at a certain charging output and then at a certain point, the charging output falls off and you can't continue charging at that rate. And there's chemistry reasons why that happens. Like you can't keep cramming the electrons in at the same speed. And so you, if you're starting at 40 kilowatts, if that's your max charge rate, What's your average charge rate? So the idea that, you know, their claim that you're going to add DC fast charging 400 miles per hour. All right, wait, now, wait a minute. You're charging at 40 kilowatts and you're not getting 10 miles a kilowatt hour anymore. Right? If you're getting nine miles a kilowatt hour, then your peak charging speed might be close to 400 miles an hour, but it's not really 400 miles an hour. And the, ultimately what you really care about when you're charging your vehicle is you're not worried about how many miles, miles per hour you're getting. You're plugging in, how fast is my vehicle charging? How long is it going to take me to charge? If you're down to zero and you want to charge to 100, it's going to take over an hour. Now, usually you're not going to discharge your vehicle to zero and you're not going to charge to 100, but you're going 20 to 80, that's 60. You know, it's probably going to be more than a half hour. It's going to charge, it may charge significantly slower than a Tesla. And the other thing is, you're going to charge at 40 kilowatts. Is Tesla going to let you charge? on a 250 kilowatt charger if you're only charging at 40 kilowatts. If I'm Tesla, I'm not letting you charge at 40 kilowatts. You need to have a certain charge rate in order to be able to use our chargers because we got these other cars that are going to charge at the full rate. If we got an empty charger, I guess we don't care if we got a whole bunch of empty chargers. But if, we, if we're busy, we can't let 40 kilowatt vehicles tie up the charger because we're not making money at the same rate. If we're charging per kilowatt, if we're charging per, per time, then I guess it doesn't matter. And sometimes Tesla charges per time. So that's an important detail that I think people need to understand is, you know, and, and normally a, a Tesla vehicle, and I think a lot of other EVs will charge at 3x, their peak charge rate will be 3x the battery capacity. So if you have a 45 kilowatt hour pack, you would be charging at about 135 kilowatts. So they're not even achieving... The, the nor what we see from a lot of other vehicles in the industry of getting three, what's called 3C, getting a 3C charge rate max. And, you know, you would get that 3C charge rate for the first, you know, five, 10 minutes, and then it would taper off. And, you know, eventually you'd get down to a 1C charge rate. They're starting at 1C. So they, they charge a lot slower than a lot of other EVs. Okay. So another detail is in the the disclosure, they say in, in the in the annual report that's dated December 31, 2023, they say that Sarah Hardwick is our chief marketing officer and one of the original Aptera team members. Okay, the problem with this is that Sarah Hardwick has a LinkedIn profile that says that she stopped working at Aptera in November of 2023. So Aptera's this the document that they filed with the FC SEC effective December 31, 2023, which they presumably filed after December 31, 2023, is false on this point. This is, this is not true. She was not, at the date of the report, she was not their chief marketing officer. She was no longer an employee of Aptera. She had moved back to her Zenzi Communications and started her, her work as an equity crowdfunding expert, right? So she wasn't working for Aptera anymore. So Aptera has what I would argue is a somewhat meaningful mistake in their disclosure that people should understand. Um, and then these are disclosures that I think we've seen before, but I think people should be aware of this. First thing is they've got a disclosure saying our auditor has issued a going concern opinion. I'm going to read these details. I think this is important to understand. This is the kind of detail that, you know, you, you really got to read these documents if you're going to invest in a company like this. The company lacks significant working capital. I'm going to go into their cash position and their cash flow uh, later in the video. 
Lack significant working capital has only recently commenced operations. We will incur significant. They're not really commencing operations actually, because they haven't. They're not manufacturing vehicles and selling vehicles. So we will incur significant additional costs before significant revenues achieved. Achieved. These matters raise substantial doubt about the company's ability to continue as a going concern, and our existing cash resources are not sufficient to meet our anticipated needs over the next 12 months from the date hereof. They don't have enough money to pay their ongoing expenses. Right? I'm a Tesla investor. Tesla has $26 billion in the bank. Um, they've got enough cash to keep themselves going, and they have enough cash flow because they have revenue coming in. Aptera doesn't have revenue coming in, or at least not meaningful revenue. They have a lot of expenses. They, I believe they've cut employees, by the way, like Sarah Hardwick. Um, during the next 12 months, the company intends to fund its operations with funds received from our Regulation A offering and our proposed future campaign and additional debt and or equity finances is determined necessary. There are no assurances that management will be able to raise capital on terms acceptable to the company. If we're unable to obtain sufficient amounts of additional capital, we may be required to reduce the scope of our plan development, which could harm our business. Okay. Um, they might not make it. They, they, you know, they're dependent. They, they've been dependent the whole way on investors giving them money, which they spend. And they keep saying, well, this money's going to go to manufacturing, and then they never get to manufacturing. The other key detail was the company plans to raise significantly more capital in future fundraising rounds, including offering equity at a significant discount to the price offered in this offering. So not only did the founders get their shares at one one thousandth of the price that you're paying and that other investors along the way pay less than you're paying for your shares? They're planning to sell stock in the future to future investors at a lower price than they're selling stock to you now. How could you possibly invest in a company that tells you we're selling you stock now and we're going to sell stock to other people later for less? Like, why wouldn't you just wait to invest in the later round? But of course, those people are going to be privileged investors that you won't get access to that round. So this is the sucker. You're basically the sucker. You're the sucker. We're going to get you to invest at the highest price we can. And then we're going to sell stock to other people at a lower price. This is like, I've never, I've actually never seen this before. I'm, I'm stunned, but they are planning. So additional finance, finance, this is dilutive. You're, you're getting less of the company. Um, yeah, so that this is really this to me, this one is really bad. We are currently because normally what happens is you invest in a company and then the company does well and it makes progress and then they do a new round of financing and the stock price goes up. This is what happened with SpaceX, right? Every round this the value of SpaceX goes up and up and up. But if you're selling stock at a lower price later, you're lowering the valuation of the company. And why am I investing now if you're gonna lower the value of the company later? I, I've never I, I've never seen somebody announce, hey, our, we're planning to lower the price of the stock after you buy it. Um, I think the crash testing, I'm not sure that the crash testing obligations for a three-wheel vehicle are as, as difficult because as, it's treated as a motorcycle. So I don't think the crash testing is necessarily their problem, Jim. I'm not saying they don't have to do any at all, but I don't think that's going to be their big problem. Okay, so another key detail to understand, and I don't think this is particularly new, is They've got a launch edition at Terra that they're planning to sell for $33,000. Now, this is a two-seat vehicle that has a 45-kilowatt-hour battery pack. Okay, it's got three wheels. Probably not as crash-worthy as a Tesla. So $33,200. For after federal tax credit, $35,490, or just a little bit more money, you could buy a Tesla Model Y. And a Model 3 would be somewhat similar in price. Right, I think the Model Three right now you don't get the tax credit for the the the, the low priced Model Three, so you're going to pay. They're going to try to sell a vehicle for thirty three thousand dollars that's not crash worthy, that doesn't have Tesla software, that doesn't charge anywhere near as fast as a Tesla, that seats two people, not five, seven in some cases for Model Y. Who's buying this thing? Seriously, would you buy an Aptera over this? $2,000 more. And by the way, the financing might be better. I, I don't know whether you're going to be able to get financing on the Aptera. You'll be able to get financing on the Model Y. Like if you're a bank, are you even going to offer loans? What's insurance? I think the insurance actually might be lower on the Aptera. That might be an advantage. But it's a two-seat vehicle. 
that's awkward. It's much wider, by the way. It's much wider than the Model Y. It's almost as wide as the Cybertruck. At the front, the front wheels are really far apart. In order to have stability, you have to have wide. Where the two wheels are, you have to have them to be wide. But like Teslas are, or, and Teslas, by the time that Aptera actually launches their vehicle, which may be 2026, Tesla's going to be selling even less expensive, less expensive vehicles. But, you know, this has a 54 kilowatt hour pack or 60 kilowatt hour pack. And the Aptera has a 45 kilowatt hour pack. I mean, you know, you can get a real car for $35,000. You can get an Aptera for $33,000. I, 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 from an investment perspective, you ask, have to ask yourself the question, okay, maybe you would buy it. But what percentage of car buyers would choose the Aptera over this? I don't think very many. I think that's a very, very small market. And, and one of the things that, that I feel like a lot of people don't talk about is how many vehicles are you going to manufacture? What happens when companies manufacture vehicles is the first few vehicles cost a lot. It takes a while to get your manufacturing down to where you get your cost of goods sold to be reasonable. So the first vehicles cost like two, three, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000 to manufacture and you sell them for $35,000. First couple thousand, maybe you're getting your average price down to $100,000, maybe first 10,000 vehicles. You're losing money on the first bunch of vehicles, and they don't have the cash to do that, by the way. So, okay, here's some, some numbers on the, the annual report. As of the result of the foregoing, our net, there's a whole you know, story of everything that happened with business. Our net loss for the year ended December 31, 2023, was $54.6 million. So they lost less than the previous year. That's that's very charming and very heartwarming. Um, uh, I think they're claiming a top speed of 100 miles an hour, by the way, Matt Burns. That was in the specs I think I posted before. So their cash position is they had, as of December 31, 2023, they had $37.6 million in total assets, including $17 million in cash and cash equivalents. So let me go back here. You lost $54 million in a year and you got $17 million on hand. You got no meaningful revenue and you got high expenses. The only way you keep this company afloat is if more suckers invest in your company and you've just told your investors that you're going to sell stock to other people cheaper later. Um, and by the way, the $17 million in cash, they have $4.8 million in accounts payable. So their $17 million in cash is really like $12 million. This is trouble. This is trouble. I don't think this is good. If you just took this main body. Sorry, let me. If you just took this main body and you pushed it down the freeway at 70 miles an hour, it would virtually have no air resistance. If you just took this main. Okay. He... Sorry. So he just made a claim there that at 70 miles an hour, you would have no air resistance. First thing, no, no, you have a coefficient of drag of 0.15. You have a frontal surface area. Now, I think he may be saying without the wheels, but I don't, I don't see how that's particularly relevant because you, you can't run the vehicle down the road without the wheels. So uh, that doesn't make any sense. Did you do a development a spreadsheet comparing cost of living use versus Thailand? Not, not for Aptera. I didn't, I didn't do a. Uh, a spreadsheet on how Aptera would, would do in Thailand. I just want, I want you to hear this again. If you just took this main body and you pushed it down the freeway at 70 miles an hour, it would virtually have no air resistance. So it's not going to have virtually no air resistance. It's going to have air resistance. It's got a certain frontal surface area. It's got a certain coefficient of drag. It's got air resistance. That's just, you know, that's like a fluff claim that, that somebody would make that doesn't make any sense. So, so that's the update. The update is that Aptera is, in my opinion, the company is a train wreck. And if you are investing in a company that is telling you that we are going to reduce, we're going to sell, you, we're selling you stock at $10 a share. And after you are dumb enough to buy our stock at $10 a share, we're going to sell stock to other people for $5 a share. I'm just looking at the chat here for a second. Heavy cars are safer, light cars not so much. That's a problem uh, for sure. This come to fruition, their only selling point is more range, but it's not really more range. And they, they, I should mention, they, they have these solar panels on the car that massively increase the cost of manufacturing the car, and it's not going to generate nearly as much uh, energy. Because you know, they're claiming 700 watts of solar, but what angle? 
Um, is it always in the sun? You know, what, how much they, are you, are you always going to be able to park in the sun? What happens on a cloud in a cloudy day? It'll probably still generate some. Yeah. It's not, it's safer than a motorcycle, but it's not as safe as a regular car. It's not as safe as a Tesla. It's not as safe as a Toyota. Um, so, you know, you're going to pay $35,000 basically for a two seater when you could get a model Y for like a couple thousand more, maybe, and you can get financing on the model Y and yeah, it just doesn't make sense. So that's it. That's the update. Uh, I think that Aptera is, uh, you know, I'm not criticizing the vehicle. You know, if they can actually make this vehicle and they can actually sell it for $33,000 and you want to buy it. Okay. I mean, it's a nice toy. I don't think the market for it is large enough for it ever to be viable as a company. Um, they don't have enough cash on hand. The only way they get more cash on hand is if they get enough suckers to invest money in a company that's basically told them we can't survive. Um, a truck would suck you in under the wheels. I don't know. I mean, you know, that's, I, I think it's cool. I like the fact that they tried, but at a certain point you got to recognize, hey, we're never going to make this work. Um, the range is too long. The battery's too big. The price is too high. Yeah, the, the 400 mile range isn't bad if you actually are able to deliver it. The, the problem is <laughs> IRS. The problem is that if you... If you're already down to 400 miles range on a 45 kilowatt hour pack, and then, you know, you've still got to go through all your manufacturing hoops and probably going to add more weight when you get through this. And there's going to be something you have to add on the surface of the vehicle to satisfy some kind of regulator. And that's going to mess your coefficient and drag up more. And you're either going to go to a 50 kilowatt hour pack, which costs you more to manufacture. You know, and, you know, think about that. How much does a 45 kilowatt hour pack cost? Right. Those batteries are expensive and they're presumably using nickel based battery cells. So you're probably talking about $200 a kilowatt hour and you put everything together. So that's like $9,000 just for the battery pack. Is that $9,000? I think it's like $9,000 just for the battery pack. So that's your update. I don't think Aptera has a chance of surviving. Uh, I'm sorry for all the Aptera fans. If you've invested in this company, I wish you well, but I don't think you're going to get your money back. And if you're going to invest more money in this company, are you really paying attention? I don't think it's a good call. Thanks everybody so much for watching. Uh, thank you, Jim Whitehead for moderating the chat and uh, we'll see y'all soon. I got more videos about Tesla coming.